next month's November. <laughs> and I'm looking at Linda. <laughs> and can, and can I say there are, there are already mince pies in coal? I'll just say that. Ah, uh, correct. Uh, so, uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for coming along. Um, we're going up a little bit in frequency because back in June, if you remember our presentation night, we had Tony, uh, VK7XTC, who gave us a great talk on whether satellites in that were 137 meg, he's nodding, yes, okay, 137 megs, um, and so what we, and, and in the process of that happening, um, Mike said, oh, I, I'm, I'm up in the microwave bands with weather satellites. At the time, Mike was sunning himself on the big island up north. <laughs> so we organised this for October. Now, we've gone up a little bit in frequency. 1.3 to 1.7 gigs is what we're talking about here. And Mike has some fantastic home-brewed uh, antennas and bits and pieces which he's going to demonstrate. So without further ado, across to Mike. Okay, thank you. Um, right, okay, first off, I am not an expert. Um, this is just something in the hobby that I followed. Uh, years ago I got uh, an SDR and was quite fascinated with it. And um, playing around with it and making antennas. And I started off uh, looking at the weather satellite stuff and I thought well I'd like to do geostationary weather uh, too hard <laughs> at this stage it's too hard I can receive the satellite but I can't decode it um, some of the, the software available um, is like 200 euros etc um, and some of the other free software uh, is beyond my comprehension. It's um, it's Linux. It needs Raspberry Pi. It's not um, Windows based, and I'm afraid my knowledge of computers stops at Windows. <coughs> so I've sort of dismissed that and thought to myself, well, what else can I do? Um, but then there's so much up there that you can do, and you can get programs for. So. What I was going to do is start off with where I started and work my way up. But then I thought, well, probably the best idea is to start right at the nitty gritty and then I'll go back and tell you how I got there. And then if it gets boring, you can go home because you've seen the best bit. <laughs> so that is, I don't think it's a photograph, but it's certainly an artist impression of... Um, in Marset, where have I got it here? In Marset 4F1. That's I N M A R S A T, number 4F1. And they are a range of platforms that, um, uh, mil well, not so much military, but uh, general commercial inter um, communications um, all, round, all around the world. There's four of them that are dedicated to um, marine uh, safety and, of course, the, the dreaded, uh, where have we got it? You have to, ex, uh, MH370, sorry. <laughs> MH370, which went missing, was supposed to be talking to this satellite and uh, it was the transponder that was turned off when they lost it. So I thought, well, okay, we'll go from there. So that's a picture of MH370, oh, so of Imarset. <laughs> Sorry. That's Excuse the old brain. Looking, uh, <laughs> that's a very mean looking MH370. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And where are we? And that's it. We have a live satellite talking to us. The antenna's out there. SDR, there's a preamp on, on the antenna. And we're looking at this range of channels centered around about 1.545 gigs. 
And if I take, I've got, uh, expand it up a bit here. Come on. Right, we're looking at that particular channel, which is ACARS. And ACARS is Aircraft Communications Addressing and Reporting System. And that is what the transponder on MH370 was switched off. So we're looking now at a digital stream coming off of that one channel down here. And I have another program. I'm taking the audio out through a virtual cable and feeding it into this program. And we are decoding right now. All this is in is the decoding that's coming off that particular channel and it's all aircraft information. It's updating all the time. I haven't got a good signal. This should be much, much better. And the, the quadrature in here should be much sharper. But unfortunately we found where I ran at home, I had perfect signal. When we set everything up this evening, it, uh, there's so much noise around here or whatever. But at least I've got something. And we are decoding. There is another program which you can take the information here and then come up with, with proper English. But I haven't got that program yet. I need to get it. But there is one part of this one which should be working. I come down to the bottom. They should be going in. Okay, you'll see this is moving up. So we are actually picking up A319 Airbus from Air China. Can you see all that okay? Mm. Yep, okay. And all right, it's just picking up stuff. Yeah, well, just in the time that I've been speaking over the minute or so, we've now got another Airbus logging in. Turkish Airlines Boeing 777. Wow. Airbus again. Most of the, the stuff is Chinese, but I have had one military one. And they're still going. It'll go on like ad infinitum. If I had the other program, we could then decode and see where their actual position is and so on. But, um, yeah, go on. Yeah. What, what area does that satellite cover? Is All of Australia. It's, it's, oh, I'll get to that. Okay, sorry. I'll get to that. So I just wanted to show you the results. Mm. I was going to say, I was going to save it till the end, but I thought, well, you know, you'll end up getting bored. So that's the outcome of what I, where I've got to. There are other programs for further decoding and uh, it's, it's a little bit awkward because some of them you've got to pay quite a few dollars for, which I'm just not prepared to at this stage. Um, and some of the programs are free, but I, one of them I tried to download and everything, you know, my, all my firewalls went, ah, and wouldn't allow me to download the stuff, so I gave that one a miss. So that's where we're at. So I'll put that away and stop that. Okay. What's outside you probably saw is that. And that is a high-tech antenna. From Australian Post? Yeah. Australian, <laughs> Australian Post. Oh, I, thought, I thought there were Christmas trees on there when I first saw it. <laughs> um, the reflector is a disc, is a disc of uh, plywood with uh, baking foil stuck to it. And that's a microphone stand and a homemade uh, wooden adjustment and the amplifier and that's what's running outside 
Okay, well, when I started off, you've all seen this. You've seen plenty of those, and I'm not going to go into it. But that's where I started off, and I got quite in intrigued. Is that where that image is? It? Yeah. 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 That's actually a, one I've kept that's a little old, but this lot down here, that's actually the fires. That's smoke from the fires mm -hmm. some years ago, if you remember. And I was so pleased with this, I, that's when I thought, well, I'll try and do geostationary. But again, it's very difficult to do the geostationary for me at this stage. So get that one. All right. I was playing around um, doing that. And I was also doing uh, two meter listening. I wasn't transmitting. I was doing two meter uh, ham stuff. And also a thing called Fun Cube. I don't know whether you know that one. It was a, it's a cube set that was um, put up for education purposes and so on. And the little dongles they handed out to uh, various universities and so on. So this is a, let's get rid of this silly thing. Where are we? So this is a decode of um, FunCube when it went over some years ago. But you can see the similar type of decoding as it went over. But every four minutes it updated. And uh, you've got things like uh, antenna, um, the temperature of, of various bits and pieces and it was just um, just downloading data but it was interesting to see that uh, you could I could do it anyway that was that was just sort of starting getting into into the data side of things um, where are we going from here we find them Bear with me. <coughs> when I was doing the the NOAA's the, the weather that's the weather one being decoded, that's the NOAA satellites information, I noticed all this stuff and I wondered what it was. They're commercial satellites, they're called Orbcom. And they, they come up in pairs, and two come up, and then they'll go down, and another two will come up. Um, they're on 100, will be on 137 meg band. Um, they they stay up for about six minutes, seven minutes, and then another couple will come up. So I looked into that one. There's a lot of information on um, all this. What I'm doing is in this book, which I got which I found like a sort of small Bible. So anyway, I looked up what the Orbcom was and I can decode that. That's an interesting one, isn't it? That's about four or five satellites all closely spaced. Um, and a very, very good signal. I've got an S, S5 signal there. There's a, a, a program called Multi-PSK, and uh, that is a free download. However, it only lasts for five minutes, and then it switches off. Uh, so I was able to use it. Uh, you, you can pay, again, you can pay for the full version. Um, so we are decoding these packets coming out here. Can you see that from up there? Or can I expand it? And that's the information that's coming off of um, off the Orbcoms. That's satellite to satellite information. You can't decode the messages because they're scrambled and they're private and so on. But you could get um, the, the general information of the satellites talking to each other, which was interesting. And after five minutes, I thought, well, that's fair enough. I've done it. So I didn't bother to go any further with that one. But it's just a very, very I thought it was a very, very in interesting catch, that one. 
Okay, having done that, then I thought, right, um, well, I need to sort of go on a bit further. Again, reading. So most of it now is L-band between uh, 1.3, I think it's 1.3 to 1.7 gigahertz, which is challenging. So I made an antenna, which is the one that's outside. And put it on the top of my shed. I was quite, I didn't want to get too involved, so I made it out of local <coughs> materials that were really, um, really simple and cheap. And I just pointed it north. And I got that. That's a film taken up my, my shack at home, which is a, a fairly big tube um, screen. Not a very good signal strength, but it was, um, it was really one of those things that made me want to carry on. Yeah? I'm not sure about I think they're multiples. Yeah, because some of them have got very wide bandwidths and others are just different channels. And then you've got satellites that are very close to each other, extremely close. Um, anyway, so that's, that's where I, I decided that uh, I'd sort of go on a bit further. So having, having made that, I thought, ah, what about a dish? So this is where it got interesting. I got um, a dish off of the late Harvey. And when I got it, it came in bits. And when I got it home, the dish was one thing, the gooseneck, I started to put it together and I found that it was the wrong goose, it was off a totally different antenna, a uh, different dish. Um, so I thought, oh, right, what am I going to do? Well, I can cut a bit off and, 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 and make it work. And then I thought to myself, well, mm, where's the focal point going to be? So this is where it all gets interesting. To the rescue with Dr. Google, I found, where are we? There is only one, I hate this thing, there's only one program I could find. Um, there are plenty of programs on the, on, the, on the web for finding the focal point of a parabola, but an off-center dish there's one. I th this took a bit of finding. Uh, and it's only a small dish zone, by the way. So people were saying it was too small, but it does work. Okay, you take the vertical dish, vertical diameter, and the sideways diameter, and the depth from the center. Plug those in, and it will give you a focal length of 340 or 41 millimeters. 590 from one end and 341 from the other. That tells me I've got an elevation of 25 degrees. Okay. This is the high tech stuff. So you draw it out on a piece of cardboard. That's that way around. And you it up there like that and you end up with the focal point so I cut then the metal bit to suit and made up this and that slots in Yep. That slots. 
that slots into there and puts my focal let focal point about there. Yes, okay, that's a it's not actually a paint, it's a um, tin uh, biscuit tin lid. And that's a piece of pipe as you can see. That's still steel. Hmm? It's still steel. Yes, it's steel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh this is a much better than the the paper one that I've got out there. Plastic pipe and um, plywood just made and that, the focal point is about there and it's held on with elastic bands. So that then right just another thing on that one um, the helical that's outside is right hand polarised when you go into a dish you need to come back left handed polar because it's a mirror it goes the other way round so that is a left handed polarised um, back to that one and a, more of a close up and you can see that All right so far? Right. Now, having having got that going, I then then I really got some good signals. Now that's using um, SDI Uno, which I don't like. However, it's all I had at the time. Uh, it's a, I find it a bit complicated, so I tend to, I tend to prefer the uh, SDR console, which is, is, is easier. So anyway, you, I've got a, what have I got there? Uh, an S6 signal, which is not bad. And that's when I started to get into uh, doing the decoding. You're still using your preamp on the dish? Yeah, I, I do on the dish, yes. Yep. I, can get, I can get a signal without the preamp, but obviously it's much better with the, with the uh, and as you can see now I, I've got a really good signal and I've got full quadrature decoding and that's with the dish and preamp and of course we're still coming out in there um, do it again and that was with the aircraft coming in and that one I kept that one because that one was interesting it's a Royal Australian mm -hmm. Airbus so it's obviously a transport aircraft oh. well it could be could be it's not, it's not Australia one, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's the Garth Mr. T. Mr. T. Oh, yeah. Mr. T. Yes, Mr. T. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, I got that far. And that, that's, that's pretty reasonable. I like that. Just out of interest, I... I don't know how you get rid of this thing completely. I really don't like it. Right. Oh, Mac out of there too. Yeah. <laughs> Again, that plugs in. I made that. It wasn't intended for this at all. It was something I made a bit earlier. This is 1.42 gigs. And it's the, for the hydrogen line. Because what I eventually want to do is radio astronomy. Uh, I'm getting there, but it's 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 slow. But I'm going to use this dish, so I plug this in, and I thought, ah, oh, that's interesting. I'll just try it. So I tried this with in unison with that, and there's no difference, absolutely no difference whatsoever in signal signal quality, strength, the lot. Even though that's made for 1.4 gigs, or 1.2, or whatever it is. At 1.6, 1.5 gigs, it still works fine. 
Um, I'm using, again, if you read the books, they say um, you need a 1 to 1.5 metre dish. Uh, I'm using a 0.7 dish. Uh, you should be using SMA connectors. You should be using low loss cable. Um, I'm using, I am using low loss TV cable. Uh, and BNC connectors and it all seems to be work. It might be better if you went to other more sophisticated equipment but this is certainly working and uh, I was very pleased with it actually. Okay, you were asking about where do we point the dish. There's two or three programs. Um, one I've been using is a satellite tracking where are we again? No, bear with me, I'm getting old. Ah, oh dear. Did you just have it? Yeah, I did just have it, but I probably deleted it or something. There we go. I'm trying to get rid of this stupid thing. So that tells me where in Marsat F4, 4 F1 is. That's almost due north. Elevation of 36 degrees uh, and so on. So you then just point your antenna up, having worked out how you work your compass on your phone. That's seems to be all wrong. That's one way, That's that was the start. And then there is a thing called dish pointer. Which for my location tells me exactly where. Now for some unknown reason, I'm not quite, quite sure, if you go between different dish pointing programs, you get a slightly different answer. Um, that one that's just been on, said that the elevation was 36 degrees, this one is 40 degrees. It doesn't make much difference, but you do get a slight slight difference. And dish pointer, you can go um, with two, I, that's, you can't see much, but that's where I am. And on the other one, you definitely can see. This is good, because there you are. That's my home next to Bunnings, just up the road from Bunnings and it gives us a, a direct line of sight um, so you can point the dish in the right direction. Okay. Going back to the helix. Um, again, there is a program or a, a site that you can go on and you just put in your frequency and you end up with the various necessary 60 uh, what, uh, what was this one 64 millimeter I think the the paper tube was 65 millimeters something like that so it's fairly fairly close um, fairly straightforward. So all of this stuff is all available online. There's no no there's no um, no magic about it. Uh, anyway, what else can I say? Are, are all the geostationary satellites are they, are they north of us? Yeah. Most of them seem to be around the uh, around the equator. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, now I have another program. It's an online program, uh, which I'm not online at the moment. But it's it gives you all of the satellites that are, are available, and you just go and choose from. Most of them seem to be over the over the horizon, um, and some you, obviously some get too low that you just can't get them the, the elevation is only two or three degrees and things like that so i've still got a lot of work to do i mean a lot of a lot of tinkering around 
Um, but I think um, probably the object of tonight was to, s to really show that you can do it and it doesn't cost a fortune and you can do it with, uh, you don't need specialised equipment. I'm using SDR Play, uh, which is very good. I was using the RTL. And the book will tell you that it gets hot at 1.6 or 1.5 to 1.6 gigs. It certainly does. Um, so I stuck, I epoxied a, a heat sink onto it um, to to make it a little bit better, which it does. But then after a while, after about half an hour or so, it cuts out. It just gets too hot at 1.6 gigs and just stops working. Whereas the SDR play works works great. It's really good, and it's a better you'll get better game from that anyway. But that got me going. That got me going and got me interested. Uh, and I think that's really all I can show you there. And if we go back we've now got we're now back on live again. If I take out the amplifier, oh wow, yeah, wow. Yeah, doesn't it make a difference? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is, is that the same if you were using the dish? Yes. No, no, sorry, no, it doesn't. It it, down, yeah, right? it goes down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, the amplifier does make a big difference. Yeah. Wow. But with the dish, I can get a signal without, without the amplifier. Okay. What's the yeah. amplifier? What's the, how much? What's the amplifier power? How much are you amplifying? Don't know. <laughs> I just bought an amplifier. <laughs> so, um, are you getting uh, weather information out of this thing as well? Well, that was what I was hoping to. Um, but trying to get the the decoding for the weather is is something else. I can pick up the weather satellite, but I can't do the decoding because one is there is an official decoding um, program that you can buy from the mob that do the satellite, but you got to buy it, and it's expensive. There is another program which is free, it's, uh, you get it off of GitHub, but it's not for Windows, it's for Linux. And I, I just don't want to go that way. You know? So at this stage, I can't, I can't do any weather decoding for, um, for geostationary. So I got involved with this. Uh, you know. Unless anybody else knows uh, of other, other ways of doing it. Is, is that set dump, the one that's on Linux that you're talking about? It's what, sorry? Is that SAP dump? Yes. Yeah. There is WXD code, old, um, which you can get for Windows, I think, which is, which is free. Well, it was licensed, now it's free. All right, I'll, I'll make a note of that later. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I'm only going from what's in this book. Yeah. They've just yeah. released a new version of SAP dump, too, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we could you try could, that. You could, you could come up on a Wednesday night and we'll... we'll yeah. Yeah, have another one. Linux, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, no, yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> um, you can at least try. That's I can at least the, try, yeah. yeah. And we're still decoding. As you can see from that, it's not such a good signal as, as the ones with the dish. And are oh, we doing a... The quadrature's doing reasonably well, but not good. So I just need more, uh, more signal. But that just goes on and on and on and on. And I need I need to get the other program to take this coding and feed that and then come up with it in, in, pla in plain English, which will give us the aircraft position, coordinates, what speed it's doing and so on. Um, 
But no, it's, it's purely academic. Um, as I've said before, my son and my, my son-in-law have said, well, you can do it on your phone. There's an app for that. There's an app for that, yeah. Yeah, you can get all the aircraft, you can get the picture with it. You, you can put other other programs on and you can give you a graphical display of where the aircraft are and all the rest of it. Um, that's and that's, you know, a way of, of keep going. Mm. But yeah, you can put it on a phone. You can, it's already there. Don't you love it how phones ruin all the fun? Yes, they do. <laughs> the fun thing is, though, yeah. it's actually like hams that put up the SDRs that they receive the info for. Correct. Yeah. So if you send them an email saying, hey, I know how to use antennas, they'll send that one. Yeah. Hey, I'm a, a newbie here tonight, so I hope, hope I can ask a question. Yes, yes, yes. Um, your dish, do you know what Ben went to take? And, and is it difficult to, to actually locate the uh, satellite? Answer to the first question is I don't know what beam width it is. The information I got from that program only gave me where the focal point was and its its off centre angle. Did you have to hunt around a bit to find? But it's not that it's not that critical. It the uh, the helical outside is far more critical than the dish. And if you if you go and find your satellite that you're looking for on one of those programs, uh, and then uh, point the dish in that direction, I had the laptop outside and I just went like that to get the best signal. And it's not too bad. That one is a bit critical. Uh, it worked very well at home this morning, and then when we came up here this evening, I was setting it up. It didn't work. Um, and obviously the environment, the electrical environment here is, is much, much different to where I am at home. Um, so I'm really pleased that we actually got this signal because at first we had nothing and I was starting to get a bit worried. That's interesting. Ooh. See something coming up there? Ooh. Now I don't know whether that's the same satellite, whether that's a different satellite. It's very difficult to find um, it's information. Like a different channel on the same satellite. Yeah, well, that's right. I know this lot here are all different. They are channels on the same satellite, and there is another channel in there, which does the which does also aircraft information. Um, but I didn't want to play around and muck it all up before I came up tonight, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I left everything as it was, and. Uh, I'll play around, I'll get back on the dish now over the next few weeks or whatever, try a few different programs and, um, and play around a bit better. But I'll go back to... Uh, oh, yeah. If I go back to... Yeah. I just want to see a level because I've just switched off the uh, ATV signal. Uh, it's still it's a bit quieter now. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's quieter. Yes, the noise mm -hmm. level has gone down because I can bring my bass line up a bit now. see that mysterious signal stronger. Yeah. What's the quadrature like? Yes, good question. Better. Uh, I've got a better signal. I'm not surprised. <laughs> so you're doing it. You've got seven megs, seven megs of 15 watts out there, seven megs bandwidth and 124 carriers, 1,024 carriers. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Well, I would guess that would create some noise. Just a little. Yeah. At, yeah. at 70 centimetres. It's actually, no, it's like a it actually kills my car remote control. Right. So, 
we have been successful. Now I can play around a bit. And DMR tends to struggle a bit too when that's on. Mm. What was... Just bear with me for a minute. I'll just stop that. And we'll go back to that little movie. One point five four zero. See, we've got these. That's <coughs> that's the signal I got off of the um, helical without any. Sorry, with the dish without an amplifier. As you can see, it's just there. Mm -hmm. And there, I don't know if that's the same satellite or whether. There is also information on the internet to go and put in the frequency and find out what it is. That's an, another way of doing it. But what are we going to try? 1.54076. What was it, OO? Zero seven six. Don't worry about that bit. Ooh. That's interesting. But that last one was on the dish. This is It's a lot of noise. That's noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't seem to be changing, do we? That's interesting. I think we've got some kind of problem with that. Mm. Some way. Seems like we've got put in the top four as well. Oh. Gee whiz. Mm. Interesting. That that could be TV. That there. Yeah. One point five. One point five. No. No. It's it's wide bandwidth anyway. Yeah, but TV, very wide bandwidth. TV uses narrow, doesn't it? Uh, so it's TV is wide, digital. but it's not in one point five. No, it's no. four hundred and something. Holy. No, no, no. Satellite TV. Oh, satellite. So ah. Oh. <laughs> no, no, not TV. Sorry, that's satellite TV. <laughs> that's yeah, some terrific noise, noise there. We were lucky with that other frequency. Yeah. Yeah. And here we've got pulses oh. coming down. Again, who knows what? 
one possible source could be ships radars yeah well it is and the L uh, this is L band it is the radar band yeah so if you slowed the speed of the bottom waterfall down you might see a, a, a rate pop up as this shows it's a very slow rotation rate for a radar but for a ship's radar but if there's more than one ship with radar running in the vicinity you, you might see more pulses different mm -hmm. strengths of pulses. yeah anyway that's it so um i hope it's been some interest to you yeah, it's, uh, it's it's an ongoing thing for me and i i enjoy playing around although it's all it's it's only received um i've not transmitted um but i i'm, I'm enjoying playing with the sdr and playing around with making and i love making antennas um, i've always been very keen on making antennas um, so anyway. Any questions for Mike? Before we finish up. Yeah? We'll show our appreciation. <laughs> <laughs>